In this tutorial, you will learn how to model a 3D printable part based on a technical drawing, in Blender 2.81. We are going to use this drawing which we downloaded from the website grabcad.com. We will model this part without the use of the Boolean modifier, and make sure the final model has no flaws from a 3D printing point of view. Before diving into this project, let's discuss how we can model a part where a cylinder is coupled with a cube, and do so seamlessly without using the Boolean modifier. Simple math will help us compute the exact location where the two surfaces intersect. Let's denote the cylinder radius, r, and half length of the cube, a. The angle alpha at which the circle and plane intersect can be calculated as the arc sine of a, divided by r. In our case, a, is 1 and r is 2. The arc sine of 0 0.5 is 30 degrees. Let's move everything out of the way along the y-axis. Select 3D cursor as the pivot point. Add a single vertex. Move it up by 2, which is the radius of the cylinder. Rotate it by 30 degrees around the y-axis. Predictably, the vertex is perfectly aligned with the right edge of the cube. Click on the spin tool. Select y as the spin axis at the top of the screen. Give it a spin. Enter double the alpha, which is 60. Also enter 60 for the number of steps. Select the leftmost and rightmost vertices of the arc and extrude them upwards. To align them with the top of the cube, select the cube, select one of its top vertices, press Shift S, and select cursor to selected. Go back to our geometry, and in the edit mode, press S for scale, Z, 0, then enter. Press F to connect the two vertices. Go back to the front view. Press Shift-C to return the 3D cursor to the origin. To complete the circle, select the leftmost vertex of the arc. Give it a spin. Enter 300 for angle and 300 for steps. Select everything, and from the Mesh menu, select Cleanup, Merge by Distance. Unselect the spin tool as we are not going to be using it anymore. Extrude by 1 along the y-axis. Extrude again by 2 along the same axis. Delete the two upper vertices at the front. Select the front row of vertices and press F to create a face. In the face select mode, select this row of faces and delete them. In the vertex select mode, select this loop of vertices, and press F to create a face. Finally select the back loop of vertices, and press F to create a face. Select everything. Press Shift N to fix the normals. Deselect everything. From the select menu, choose select all by trait, non-manifold. Nothing got highlighted, which means our model has no flaws from a 3D printing point of view. We are going to be using the same technique to model our part. Let's start modeling. Delete the default cube. Select 3D cursor as the pivot point, and under Preferences, make sure the add-on, add mesh, extra objects, is selected. Open a new vertical window. Select Image Editor as the window type. Select the image with the technical drawing of our part for easy reference. Press 1 on the numeric keypad to switch to the front orthographic view. The coordinate origin will correspond to this point on the drawing. Let's begin modeling the H-shaped surface above the cylinder. According to the drawing, this edge is 29 millimeters above the origin. 
Add a single vertex. Move it up 29. Extrude to the right by 9. Move the left side to the left by 9. Extrude upwards by 10. Extrude the right vertex upwards by 10. Extrude to the right by 10. Extrude the left vertex to the left by 10. Now let's begin modeling the slanted face below the cylinder. Its bottom is 38 mm below the origin. Add a vertex. Move it down by 38. Move to the right by 5. Extrude to the left by 10. Let's perform the coupling. The outside radius of the cylinder is 25. The half width of the upper plane is 19. Bring out the calculator. Select degrees. Compute arc sine of 19 divided by 25. Copy this number to the clipboard. Add a single vertex, move it up by 25. Rotate it around the y-axis by the number in the clipboard by pressing R, Y, Control V, then Enter. Click the Spin tool. Select the y-axis at the top. In the angle box, enter double the number in the clipboard. Enter 99 in the steps box, which is roughly the same as the angle value. Connect the leftmost and rightmost vertices of the arc with the corresponding vertices above them. Now, let's perform the same procedure with the bottom plane. The radius is 25, and the half width of the lower plane is 5. Copy the number to the clipboard. Add a single vertex and move it down by 25. Rotate around the y-axis by the angle in the clipboard. Using the spin tool, create an arc with the angle set to double the value in the clipboard, and enter 23 in the steps box. Connect the leftmost and rightmost vertices of the arc with the corresponding vertices in the plane below. Now let's complete the circle. In the calculator, add together the last two numbers, and subtract 180 from the sum. Copy the number to the clipboard. Select the rightmost vertex of the upper arc. Give it a spin to the left. Copy the number to the angle box. Enter 119 in the steps box. Do the same to complete the left side of the circle. Select everything and from the mesh menu, select cleanup, merge by distance. Get rid of the spin tool as we won't be needing it anymore. The most difficult part of the model is finished. Let's model the inner circle of the cylinder. Its radius is 16. We need the inner circle to have the same number of vertices as the outer circle. Select everything and unselect the vertices that do not belong to the circle. According to the display at the bottom, there are 360 vertices. Add a circle, enter 16 for radius and 360 for the number of vertices. Rotate it by 90 degrees around the x-axis. Select everything, unselect the vertices that do not belong to the circles, and from the edge menu, select bridge edge loops. Let's model the bottom slanted face. Select these vertices on the outer circle, and the bottom vertices. Press F to create a face. Move the two bottom vertices forward by 25 by pressing G, Y, negative 25, then enter. According to the drawing, this surface should be flat. If we look at our model from a side view, this face is not flat. To make it perfectly flat, we need to align all the vertices of the arc vertically. Select these two vertices. Press Shift S and select cursor to selected. Now select all vertices on the arc. Select S for scale, Z, 0, then enter. The face is now perfectly flat.
Select everything and extrude along the y-axis by 13. Then extrude again in the same direction by 25. It is time to remove some unnecessary geometry. Deselect the top six vertices in the back. In the face select mode, delete the selected faces. In the vertex select mode, select the six top vertices at the front and delete them. In the face select mode, select these faces and delete them. In the vertex select mode, select this loop of vertices. Press F to create a face. Select any vertex in the back. Press Shift S and select cursor to selected. Select these two bottom vertices and align them with the back vertices by pressing S, Y, 0, then enter. We do not need these two slanted edges. In the edge select mode, select them, press X and select dissolve edges. We also do not need the two faces at the bottom. In the face select mode, select and delete them. Let's also dissolve these two middle vertices at the bottom. Select this edge and extrude it to the left by 58. Extrude the opposite edge to the right by 58. Select these three front edges and extrude them downwards by 13. Extrude along the y-axis by 63. Then extrude by another 13. Extrude upwards by 90. Create a loop cut across the back face by pressing Ctrl-R. Move it all the way up. Lower it by 10 by pressing G, Z, negative 10, then enter. Dissolve these two long edges. Also remove this face. Move these two edges along the x-axis by 4 and negative 4. Select this vertex and extrude it by 44 to the left, and this one by 44 to the right. Create multiple faces as follows. Dissolve these two edges in the back. Select everything and press Shift N to fix the normals. Create rounded corners by selecting these two edges, and pressing Ctrl B for bevel. Enter 25 for width and 64 for segments. From the Select menu, choose Select All by Trait, Non-Manifold. The back side of the inner cylinder gets highlighted. We have apparently made a mistake by not modeling it as a through hole. Delete the entire back face. Select this loop of vertices. 
Extrude by 13 along the Y axis. Press Shift S and select cursor to selected. Extrude and scale to create another ring of vertices by pressing E, S, Shift Y, 1.5, then enter. Select the outer loop of vertices and press Alt F for beauty fill, to fill the gap. The second ring of vertices is optional but very useful, it allows the beauty fill operation to be quickly undone if necessary. All that is left to do is create two through holes in the bottom panel. Select this corner vertex. Press Shift S and select cursor to selected. Press N to open the side panel, and open the view tab. Move the 3D cursor 19 mm along an X axis and 25 mm along the Y axis. In the face select mode, delete these four faces. Press Shift A, and select circle. Enter 64 for vertices and 7 for radius. Create a second ring of vertices by pressing E, S, Shift Z, 1.5, then enter. Select the inner circle and extrude downwards by 13. Create another ring by pressing E, S, Shift Z, 1.5, then enter. Press Ctrl plus a few times to select the whole thing. Press Shift D, X, 88, then enter to create a second hole on the other side. Use Beauty Fill by pressing Alt F to fill the gaps. Select everything. Select Shift N to fix the normals. Deselect everything. From the Select menu, choose Select All by Trait, Non-Manifold. Switch to the wireframe mode by pressing Z, to make sure nothing is highlighted. Press Tab to exit the edit mode. One last step is to make sure the model has no flaws as far as the Simplify 3D software is concerned. Export the model to an .stl file and open it in Simplify 3D. Our model passes both tests. And that concludes our tutorial. Thanks for watching.